This lecture is about group models and uh, as a word of uh, warning or actually it's not really a warning, it should be pleasant. Uh, this is not going to be a long lecture because it very much resembles uh, what we will be doing in the next lecture about uh, metabolization models. So um, we just saw in the previous lecture that uh, there are a variety of reasons why you might want to integrate groups into a formulation. And what I'm going to show you here is a few models, uh, mostly not so much about their analysis, uh, but a few models about groups. Um, so in terms of the type of uh, groups uh, we'll be looking at, we'll be essentially mimicking what we saw in the previous lecture. Uh, age structured models, social structure, heterogeneity, immunological uh, component, uh, so pathogeneity and immunological components will be two sort of sides of the same coin. And I'll say very briefly a few words about analyzing group models and even fewer words about uh, how to simulate them. Now, in terms of formulating group models, um, I'll, I'll sort of give a justification by pointing out what the limitations would be of single populations, uh, population ODE models. So we just saw that ODEs, they essentially assume that everything is the same in a given population, mixing his homogeneous, uh, all the individuals, although they have potentially different characteristics, they're all of the same type. Uh, and they can spend different times in compartments. And this is something we'll see in uh, one of the uh, last, well, actually the last lecture in the, in the course. But altogether, they're all the same. And we saw that this is not true. And that as soon as you start digging into the details, it's worth thinking about the fact that not all individuals in a given population are the same. So groups in practice can be used for many things. And these are um, some of the notions that we already saw. I'll just point out, uh, for example, host heterogeneity is something we haven't seen uh, in the previous lecture. We could be thinking, for instance, of individuals who are super spreaders. So your population could consist of two types of individuals, regular individuals and individuals who are super spreaders, who spread to many more, um, etc. And I'll point out that one thing we won't do here, because it will come in the next lecture, is spatial heterogeneity. Uh, okay. But uh, this being said, let's uh, look at a few uh, examples. So first of all, age structured models. And I'll point out that if you're thinking about something that happens in a way that is dependent on age, ODEs might not be the best way to incorporate age. Uh, this is for a variety of reasons that I won't explain right now, but that will become clear later. Uh, but if you wanted to do things properly, how would you do? Well, that's one example. So this is a model that incorporates both groups in the, for instance, social uh, aspects, uh, but also age structure, which, as we saw earlier, can be thought of as a sort of grouping. Uh, so this is a model by Zilan Feng, um, Wang, and uh, Carlos Castillo Chavez. Um, so this is a typical age structured model. It's a PVE, partial differential equation. And what we have is we have a distribution of S and I that depend on both time, current instant, and age. Uh, and it is formulated always uh, something looking like this. So the evolution of S as a function of both time and age uh, 
is a function of some characteristics. So here what we have is we have a, a mortality that is, uh, so I here is the index of the group, okay, and A is H. Um, so there's a mortality, that mortality depends on the group, it depends on age as well, and this is a very reasonable uh, assumption to make. Your uh, mortality depends on how old you are. If you're very old, you have a much higher risk of dying. Uh, so this is an age-dependent mortality. This is the infection term, and I'll come back to that in a second. And this is an SIS model. So after uh, some time in the eye compartments, uh, you will remove a return to the S compartments uh, at this rate gamma i of A. So again, recovery depends on age. You might recover differently if you're young, but if you're old then your immune system is aged, for example. And finally, remember I talked about uh, some time back about the force of infection and here we see a use of the force of infection. So this term here, lambda i of a and i of t, is the force of infection that applies to individuals in compartment I, in group i who are of h, t and a. And we compute this by using some kernel plus the contribution of all the others, J being the groups, okay? Um, so this is how individuals of age A get infected, and they get infected by computing uh, this kernel of infection of individuals of age uh, of a group I, and also we need to sum the contribution of individuals in all of the groups because this is a multi-group model. Okay, so uh, if you're in group one, say you might be infected by groups two to whatever uh, n. Okay, so I'm not going to detail this model at all. I'll just point out uh, a few facts about this, but I, I won't get into the details. So first of all, as always, uh, with a, a partial differential equation, you need both boundary and initial conditions. So initial conditions are simple. We formulate them this way. Uh, they simply say that at time zero, there is a certain distribution of individuals of ages, uh, for different ages throughout uh, the S and I uh, variables. And there's also a boundary condition which tells us how many people are introduced in the model at time t. And you can see that the new susceptibles are obtained by integrating a birth function over all ages. And this model clearly has a vertical transmission, okay? Because what you can see is that there's a certain contribution of uh, infectious to birth in the S compartment and in the I compartment. Okay. Oh yes, you see it here. QI is the fraction of newborns that is infected. And with some analysis, you can find a basic reproduction number for each group. And that basic reproduction number, of course, has a more elaborate form than we would see if we were looking at an ODE, but it plays essentially the same role. But you can see that it runs as an integral over the birth uh, per age and uh, takes into account this is survival to death uh, of age tau. As I said, I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, the paper is interesting. I, if you are into uh, this type of thing, I really recommend you take a look. Um, there's uh, some results that they obtain in terms of global stability. Uh, they, of course, need to simplify things because the model in itself that way is too complicated. And 
of course, one of the issues with this type of model is that it's very complicated to actually simulate them uh, numerically. Um, now, if we are going to do the ODU route, I'll just point out uh, before we move on about age structured models. Uh, there's a problem with ODEs when you're doing age structure is that if you start putting compartments to say, for instance, individuals of age one, individuals of age two, and so on, is that the sojourn times in age groups is exponentially distributed. And if you wanted to do age groups properly, well, you don't age on average one year every year you age one year exactly every year. And to do that, you would need to use a different type of hypothesis about the time spent in compartments. And this is what we'll talk about in the last lecture. Now, social structure. So let's look at a model of uh, Varugese, uh, Langlois Kwasen, Long and Lee. So these are people from Alberta in Canada. And uh, so they uh, here are interested in formulating a model for tuberculosis in foreign-born Canadians. Uh, so people who are uh, now in Canada but were born uh, elsewhere. And there's, uh, so in terms of immigration to Canada, a lot of new immigrants come from countries in which TB is very active. So I was discussing a little bit earlier how uh, you can think of different groups of countries and well, a lot of immigrants to Canada come from countries that have high TB incidence and prevalence. So an incidence over a hundred new uh, cases per 100,000 per uh, year. Um, and one thing that was very interesting to these authors was that you can, you, there is evidence that uh, people, when they immigrate, they tend to develop TB in the very first few years of their presence in Canada. And so the authors here wanted to investigate this aspect as well as the effect of screening measures. So they write <coughs> what we could say is a typical uh, group model, and we'll see other examples of this type of model. So uh, what you'll often see in group models is something that looks like this, and I could oops, move myself out of the way, perhaps. Um, maybe if I, whoops, this is weird. Um, Maybe if I go here, I will be less visible. Uh, okay, so what group models often do is they replicate the same structure over and over again. So we saw that in the age structured model before where the index i indicated what group you were in and the equations were the SIS model, uh, age structured SIS model in each replication. And here the idea is a bit the same. You have, um, latent uh, TB infection model. And so you have uh, groups that denote the type of uh, incidence groups uh, of what type of countries people came to, uh, came from. They have age groups, okay? And they have compartments E, M, and L that denote foreign born people that arrived within two years, three and five years, and uh, long stay. And you see that what is happening is that the model here, I'm not going to detail it, this is treatment, I'm assuming. Uh, the, the model considers each of these uh, groups as uh, being in contact. So everybody, when you're looking at the, uh, I don't have the equations here, but when you're looking at uh, the contact term, the contact term would do a bit the same way as we saw with the age structured model. There would be a sum that involves all the individuals that are contributing to infection within that population. Okay, so this is an example of a socially structured uh, group uh, model. Uh, let me <coughs> now show you a model with pathogen uh, heterogeneity. 
so this is work that I did uh, about COVID. Uh, and here we were interested in uh, modeling what happens when there is another, there, there are two variants. So there's a variant that's present and a new variant that comes. Uh, and we want to know what happens in terms of propagation. So to do that, exactly in the same way uh, as I was just explaining with the uh, TB model, uh, what we do is we make two models that are exactly the same. So one is for what we'll call the resident variant, the one that was already here. So, um, so for the resident variant, uh, you have, so this is an SLIAR type model, but it's a little bit more complex. So I'm not going to go into much of the details here. I'll just say there are latent compartments, detected compartments, and undetected compartments. Okay, recovered, uh, dead. And what we do is we mimic this model, which is an SLIAR model, like a modified, and we say, okay, there's a copy of this model uh, that is for the novel variant. And what's happening is that there are people in this model and there are people in this model and they both come into contact with the same pool of susceptibles. And the susceptibles that are present, if they come into contact with uh, someone who's bearing the resident variant, they'll become infected by that person. And if they be come into contact with someone who's uh, infected with a novel variant, they become infected like this. And of course, the force uh, of this infection depends on how many people there are in those two types of uh, compartments, okay, resident or uh, novel. And so the coupling comes through the force of infection itself. Okay. So we had here, uh, before we had an F of SIN. Here we are going to use a force of infection. As I pointed out, sometimes it's, it makes more sense to use one or the other. And here I'm going to use phi X for the force of infection. And what it does, that phi for a given, so this is the original variant and this is the new variant. So for a given variant, original or new, the force of infection depends on how many people are in late stage latent, because this is in the case of COVID, uh, this was the model for COVID. Uh, in the case of COVID, you can be infectious at the late stages of your uh, incubation period. Then if you are detected, we're assuming Psi is less than one. So if you are detected, you're less infectious because you're supposed to stay home. And then the undetected individuals, they are going through in the population uh, and infecting potentially others. So that's where this term here and here come from. Okay, so this is how infectious the original variant bearing people are, and this is how infectious the uh, new variant, novel variant uh, bearing people are. And so these contribute to infection for the resident variant, and these contribute to infection for the um, uh, novel variant, okay? And the idea is the same, so we can track this. And let me add even more groups. So we were uh, considering this problem, and for, for us, what was the motivation here was to really try to understand what the contribution of cases arriving from outside the jurisdiction uh, could be. And so we wanted to be able to say how much importations, uh, importations in the sense of things coming from outside a jurisdiction, uh, how much these imported cases contributed to propagation within the location. And so what we did is we sort of complexified the model a step more and uh, did so by assuming that when an individual comes in a new location, they don't join that location right away. They 
are what we call in an importation layer. Okay, so when, suppose you come from another uh, country, you arrive in the new country, we still think of you as belonging to your former country, but you are still interacting with the individuals that are present in the country which you've joined, okay? But we keep you separate, this way we can count. Okay, and that's a, that's a common thing in modeling. If you want to be able to track things, you have to make compartments that take into account um, this. I've got a weird thing that is making some. Oh, that is weird. Okay, that's better, sorry. <laughs> so if you want to uh, count things, you have to make compartments for things to happen in. So if I want to know how many people, or how much people coming from outside the jurisdiction are contributing to infection, I have to make compartments for them. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the model we had before, but I'm making two extra compartments on a uh, group of compartments on the side that represent those importation layers. So individuals, when they come from outside the location of interest, they are inserted in this model, okay? Whether it's in the novel variant or the old, the resident variant. And all of those people that are the four types of groups that are present there are all interacting together, okay? But what infection takes place depends on how many people there are in uh, each of the different groups. Okay. So this is four groups. This one, um, you cannot, so there's no arrow from S to here or from S to here because you're in the importation layer. So there's no new infections happening from the import, in the importation layer. The, the, infection, the importation layer can contribute to infections, and you see this here. So if I'm looking at a given type of variant and a given type of importation or uh, community layer, I have this force of infection as I had before, but the force of infection for a given variant type, so the original or the novel variant, is the sum of the two forces of infection. Now let's look at, uh, very quickly, uh, models with an immunological component. So uh, here I'm uh, giving an example of a paper by Guo, Li, and Shui. Uh, and here it's for viruses such as HIV, for instance. Uh, and what you want to describe is the fact that throughout your infected life, uh, if you've been infected with a good disease like HIV, for instance, um, your infectivity might change because your viral load changes and uh, with the changes in the viral load that you harbor uh, also comes changes in how infectious you are to others. And so to consider this, they look at a model like this. So here I've got susceptibles, I've got potentially recovered, so that doesn't need to be for HIV. I, I'm not sure exactly what this model is for, but there were some like this that were used or if they can be removed, and that could be, for instance, full-blown AIDS. Okay, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Well, I can check, but uh, what's important here is that you have this uh, movement between different infectious compartments, infected and infectious compartments. And so here, what you can see is that you can progress through these compartments one way, you can progress back and you can also jump quickly between different compartments. And this can correspond to, uh, for instance, if you have a very high, suppose this is, again, I'm speculating here, but suppose that the eyes correspond to different viral load levels. Well, if you undergo treatment, uh, 
your viral load might go down uh, abruptly uh, and take you down to uh, a much better situation. Um, so there's a whole load of uh, possibilities that are there. And these are typical models that sort of incorporate some heterogeneity. And you see, again, let me stress this, you see here that the infection term is a function of n, so a total pop population in the system, and a sum, because how much infection acts on s depends on how many there are of each type of individual, okay? And this gj here indicates that each type of ij might not have the same infectivity to others. Okay. So this is a model that is structured in terms of uh, the immunological level. And apparently I seem to have forgotten uh, to put uh, other types of structures. I might add them later. Uh, let me say a word quickly about the analysis of uh, group models. Uh, so there's a model uh, of Crowley and Schwey, uh, but there's considerations in, uh, ooh, this is Li and Schwey, not Lu and Schwey. Uh, this is, there's considerations in a paper by uh, Michael Li and Jisheng Schwey. Uh, they've, they've come up with a, a nice technique to analyze this type of models. Um, this we will see also in um, in metapopulation models, which will be the object of the next lecture, is that it, when you're looking at group models, the analysis typically is an interesting combination of what I would call classical ODE stability theory, uh, but also a lot of linear algebra and graph theory. Uh, so. Uh, Li and Shui and Bo Li and Shui, I mean, in that model we just saw, uh, they uh, show global asymptotic stability when uh, you have less than or equal to, uh, or zero, the basic reproduction number is less than or equal to one, or when it is larger than one, so in that case it's global asymptotic stability of an endemic equilibrium. Uh, when R0 is less than one, they use a trick that is quite commonly uh, used, is they use the Lyapunov function that is uh, just for a weighted sum of the infectious variables. And uh, that is something that you might want to bear in mind when you're trying to show the global asymptotic stability of uh, disease-free equilibria, oftentimes uh, I or some constant times I, or in this case, because there are many I compartments, uh, some linear combination of the I compartments uh, will uh, often provide a Lyapunov function. And for the endemic equilibrium point, they use uh, what I would call a Go type Lyapunov function, which is looks complicated, but when you differentiate this with respect to time, you get a an expression um, that is very complicated, actually. And there is a very clever use in their paper and their, their the method they propose of what is called Kirchhoff's uh, matrix tree theorem to show that when you take the time derivative of this function and these tau here are coefficients that you need to uh, ensure provide a function that's decreasing, v needs to be negative definite. Well, using this, uh, this theorem, they're able to show that this is indeed the case. Okay. And the last thing I want to say is that simulating group models works very much the same as simulating metapopulations. So I'm not going to go into details here um, because I will be detailing this in another context.